Welcome back to another episode here on your favorite podcast, Que Onda Raza, uh, etc. Sorry, I kind of like got stuck there. <laughs> Today we have a very special guest. Some of you may know him. He is he is pretty popular here in the area. He's a very well-known man, but uh, he is Texas representative, representative Rafael Anchia. How are you, man? I'm doing great, Brandon. Thanks for having me today. No, for sure. No, thank you for accepting the invitation. Uh, I didn't think it would it would be this easy to oh. to get a hold of you. Yeah, I was I'm like, gl- oh, I'm glad. It, I'm it glad to awesome. hear it. Yeah, no, no, no. It was. Uh, I was. I was shocked as soon as you were like, or like I texted you, and then like I think like 30 minutes later, like your staff was already texting me back. Yes, they're we, really good. They're honestly, good. They're good. A- a- Ana Reyes is like a yeah. treasure. You know, she used to be on the Farmers Branch City Council. She's the first person of color ever to serve yeah. on the Farmers Branch City Council. She's a badass and I'm lucky to have her in my life. And she, you know, she yeah. treats everybody great. Oh yeah, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, oh my God, I totally forgot to ask you this off air. I'm not even gonna cut it out, but how do you, what do you prefer that they call you? Like, the rock? You can call me Rafa, man. You know, Rafa? Like, yeah, yeah, Are yeah. Are you comfortable with that? No, of course. Like, like all the people, people who've known me for a long time, uh, all call me Rafa, my parents call me Rafa. So. Okay. Uh, in fact, you know, we're, we're kind of rebranding our signs and we're going to have some Rafa signs. Rafa signs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just because, you know, I think I think um, with the popularity of the tennis player and oh, his, that? his clothing line and, and, you know, before I would say like maybe 10, 15 years ago, nobody know, would have known what Rafa meant. But mm-hmm. now it's it's much more popular. For sure. So I think we're going to be going with that. Are, do, you like, do you play tennis? I do. Do you? I do. And that's, that's one of the things I wanted to ask you. I, I thought I'd, Cause I kind of do a little like you know like uh, research on you, <laughs> and as far as social media goes, you're. I it kind of seems like someone handles most of it for you, right? But on Twitter, that I feel like I feel like this is actually him, like re- retweeting, but the sports stuff. One hundred, one hundred. Like, um, uh, you know, everything else is very curated by by my staff uh, and my team. Um, so if. You know, I, I, I come in a little bit more spicy on Twitter because um, that really is that really is me. I'm a big sports fan. I grew up an athlete, and uh, and and so it's it's a big part of my formation right. uh, as a as a person. And you know, for people who aren't sports nuts mm-hmm. and who are not athletic, they probably don't understand it. But yeah, on my Twitter feed, I I, I like. Um, I, I pretty much like every sport, you know. That's I, awesome. And I, and I played a lot. So I play a little tennis, especially with Rebecca. Rebecca um, played on her high school team in Laredo. And so we, we get out and hit over here in, in, in Oak Cliff, sometimes at Kid Springs, sometimes at, at Stevens Park, sometimes at um, at Lake Cliff Park. Oh, we, we like to hit a little bit. Nice, yeah. nice. I'm definitely... I'd have to like stop by one day, like <laughs> challenge you. Let's see I'm, not I, I'm not very good. I'm not very good. I like tennis. Tennis is, is pretty good. I'm. I don't have patience for golf though. No. Even though either. that's the business sport, but I have no patience for golf. I didn't grow up playing golf. The only time I ever got on a golf course, as a, of course, as a kid, is when we would sort of bootleg, go on and play football right. on the golf course, and then the golfers would come through and they'd scream at us, and we'd get off. Nice. And then we'd get back on. So. Hell yeah. Yeah, that was my only exposure. That's awesome. Dog. All right, for those that don't know ex- everything about or most of Rafael's career, it's man. I read they sent me the bio. It you it is. I'm very very yeah, impressed. Don't read the bio, please. I, I, I shorten it out a little bit, <laughs> but I do I do need to read. I just just so that people can kind of get an idea, right? But this is what I got. So it's like so it's. And I apologize if I mispronounce any of this. Go. So Rafael Anchia is currently serving his ninth term in the Texas legislature and represents a western corridor of Dallas, Texas, Dallas County, which includes the cities of Dallas, Farmers Branch, and Irving. Representative Anchia currently serves as the chairman of the House Committee on Pensions, Investments, and Financial Services. He also serves as a member of the Energy Resources Committee and the Re- Redistricting Com- Committee. Most recently, Representative Achia Anchia has a, was appointed to serve on the Texas Privacy Protection Advisory Council. <laughs> Prior to serving to the <laughs> in the Texas House, Representative Anchia was twice elected elected to serve as a trustee for the Dallas Independent School District. That's awesome. From 2011 to 2015, he served in President Barack Obama's administration as an appointee to the Advisory Committee for Trade Policy and Negotiations which advises the White House and U.S. Trade Representative on trade and investment agreements. 
In 2017, uh, Representative Anchilla was elected by his peers as chairman of the Mexican-American Legislative Caucus, the oldest and largest Latino caucus in the United States. He has he has dedicated his service to fighting for civil rights, public education, protecting the environment, and improving access to health care for women and children. Representative Anchilla is a co-founder and managing director in the global the global investment firm Civitas. Is that how you say it? Civitas. Uh-huh. Civitas yeah. Capital Group. And he also serves as of counsel of the largest law firm in Dallas, Haynes and how do you say this? Bowen. Boone. Boone. My bad. Boone. Boone. Where he represents financial institutions and pri- public and private funds. Man, that is a lot. That you you is, have a third uh, lung. I don't know how you read all that. Dude, but. man, God, <laughs> that, is, that is impressive. It's, uh, you know, the first question that comes to my mind is really like, why, at what age did you even start? Right. So, I, it re, you know, I always go back and give honor to my parents. Um, they were immigrants to this country. Um, they both came here in the 50s from pretty tough circumstances. My dad came from uh, the Basque country in northern Spain. They had just, you know, he was born during the Civil War in Spain. And, you know, he grew oh, up wow. in, a, in an environment that was pretty tough. Seventh grade education, left the house to, you know, become a goat herder. And then later left permanently, he left his home permanently at 15 years old to go make money for his family. And he... He left home and he went to, at 17, he went to Italy. At 19, he came to the United States. So hustler, t- wow. hardest working guy I've ever met. Beast, total beast. Um, you know, it was tough. Like he had two parents who were alcoholics, who weren't around, he grew up after a war. And so I, I give him a lot of honor um, because he he did a lot with a little, you know, with, right. with, with like a limited basket of skills. Um, you know, he knew hard work. And he knew, you know, respect. And he was a tough dad, but I, I give him honor. And then I honor my mom for different reasons because she immigrated from Mexico. Um, you know, she was, I, I watched my mom uh, graduate from community college. Right. Uh, I watched her acro- walk across the gym floor, you know, from that community college. Uh, she got her two year degree. Then I watched her graduate from our neighborhood uh, four year university all at night. Uh, right. While she was working during the day uh, with two kids, and then and then you know, and then she became a public school teacher and did that for thirty years, teaching you know Mexican and Nicaraguan and El Salvadorian and Cuban you know uh, immigrants in our neighborhood, and it was it was you know th- that's where it started, man. I got to tell you, it started with mm-hmm. them, and and uh, seeing the effort that they put in, I, I I still have no idea how they did it. You know, I was, my dad lost his job at, at one point. You know, we had to move in with my mother, Ina, and so just just that whole that that whole mm-hmm. life experience is really what did it. So I always I've always had ganas um, from a young age, just because of my parents, and you know that's something that when I talk to um, Latino youth, young people, I'm like, hey, think about what your parents have done, right? And right. And, and many times, like. You know, um, Latino parents who are immigrants, they, uh, you know, they're not doing it for themselves. It's like the most selfless act because they know that they're because of their, you know, their, their the way their life started and where they're supposed to go that they're not going to fully live the American dream. They're going to live the American dream through their kids. So, like, it's this amazing selfless thing. And, and so I've always tried to give honor to them by putting that same kind of effort into my life, you know, and achieving because I know that, you know, they didn't get to be the lawyer. They didn't get to be the business person. They didn't get to be elected. Mm-hmm. In fact, my father was a, became a U.S. citizen in 2014. So they, they, they had nice. all these deferred dreams for their kids. And, yeah. and so that's, that fuels me. That fuels me. And then, you know, the other thing is being a dad. Um, uh, that... <laughs> being a dad is such a freaking hard responsibility and I make mistakes every day as a parent. And, um, you know, the other thing that drives me is making sure that there's a good world left right. for the kids, you know, for my kids, for, for everybody's kids, because we're a pretty delicate time right now. It, it, it I don't know how it feels to you, but it feels, right. no, yeah. it feels super unsettling, you know, I definitely agree with that. Um, Man, you totally just went into my other questions. My bad. That was my good. Bad. No, that's good. That was good. My bad. Yeah, and I was gonna just, I was simply gonna ask you, like, who is Rafael? You know, who is, um, you know, the man behind 
el verdad, verdaderamente Rafael, you know, el, el hombre detrás del mito, from all this professional uh, career, your, outside of your accomplishments. Um, also, you know, I, wanna, I do want to go into you a little bit from your earlier, like, uh, childhood, like you did, you know, you talked about your parents, yeah. brothers, sisters. I have a sister, I have one sister. Um, there wasn't a lot of money in the house, so she was born seven years later <laughs> okay. than me. And so, you know, I left, uh, I got my big break when I was 17. I got a scholarship to come to SMU. I, I, I didn't know where Dallas was. I didn't know what, what the M in S Southern Methodist University stand mm -hmm. for. I was this little new immigrant Catholic kid, and, um, but I got money. They gave right. me an academic scholarship and that changed everything for me. So that's when I came out to Dallas in 1986 to go to SMU. Um, and then she was 10 years old when I left and so uh, Christy, she's a super mega successful real estate lawyer in, in South Florida now. Um, but she kind of grew up a little bit like a, like a, an only child, you know, okay. because she's seven years younger, right. but we're super close. And in fact, this weekend I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go see her um, and spend time with her family and then, um, and then with my parents who, you know, God bless, mm -hmm. God has blessed me that they're still living, um, even though my dad is in a little bit of decline. But, so that I mean I I feel like I'm my I'm who's Rafael Lanche I'm the son of my 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 parents uh, I'm the father to Sophia and Maya and I am you know I'm the I, I try to be a good partner to Rebecca Cunha um, who I'm madly in love with you know and that's and then everything <laughs> else <laughs> every I really I mean it's so nice to be in love it feels so good to be in love. Um, and uh, I don't know if you ever see, but I, I give her shout outs uh, on, on Twitter yeah. all the time because I'm just yeah, crazy yeah. about her. You That's know? awesome. That's awesome. And Congratulations. So, thanks, man. That's so, awesome. so in my personal life, I feel real, real good. And then in my public service life, um, you know, that's where I just... Uh, the way I look at this job of, of being an uh, elected official, it's the best job I've ever had uh, uh, being a state rep is, um, you know, it's insane because people who are your neighbors, who are your friends, who have never ever met you in their entire life, right. and, and, and the district I represent now goes from North Oak Cliff all the way up to Carrollton and out west to Irving and out, and out east to Love Field, like they, they give you something that is so powerful and so precious, you know, it's their vote. Holy smokes, I mean, they give you your vote. They tell you, you know, either that they're going to support you or in the ballot box they look at your name and and that name triggers something in their mind they don't you know maybe right. not what maybe they like the name rafael maybe you know maybe they saw me on tv maybe i knocked on their door at one point but they're willing to just like check that box and it's it's incredible it's it's like this um this really powerful honor and to know that this state is 30 million people and only 150 of us get selected by our neighbors mm -hmm. to go down to Austin and represent them. Psh. I mean, if, if that doesn't give you motivation to work hard, right. then then you suck, they, <laughs> basically. <laughs> Pretty much, in the words of Rafael Lanchino. Yeah. <laughs> uh, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a kid, did you, did you always, what did you aspire to be? So two things. Um, yeah, my father uh, became a, a professional athlete. He was um, he played a, a very um, not well known sport now, but then it was it was pretty well known. It's called high ally, pelota vasca. They play it um, in in Mexico. They call it fronton. In, in Mexico, they still play it. And there's a the, one of the best places to go see high ally is in La Ciudad de Mexico. Wait, so but it still does exist. It sport. still does. Not in the United States as much, but he played professionally and he was very good. Um, he played from when he was 15 to when he was about 30 professionally the whole time. And a um, little guy, 5'7", but tough, tough as nails. And he he was powerful. And then so, so you know, I felt like that was a responsibility for me uh, and I wanted to be a professional just like my dad and he was my coach. He was a tough tough guy um, And so I played from when I was four until I was 17 and then I was supposed to turn professional at 17 at the same time My dad was like este deporte se muere in Estados Unidos He saw the decline of the sport that it was not going to be a long-term thing for me and he said um, Vete a hacer lo que yo nunca hice y vete a estudiar and so, you know, coming from a guy with a seventh grade education, I was like, 
like, ah, right, you know, you know, teenagers. We're, right. We're, the teenagers are some of the most amazing and some of the most awful human beings ever. So at 17 years old, I was like, like dismissing my dad, right, because of mm-hmm. his last lack of education, which is a horrible thing to do. And um, but he was right. He was he was totally right because high ally in the United States declined immediately. And he had the foresight to give me that good advice and, and basically um, required me to go to university. He's like, you, you got a freaking academic scholarship from this awesome university and out somewhere in, in the West mm-hmm. and go. And I didn't know any better. Like I, you know. Were you a straight, like a, like a, like a straight arrow? Like I was. Good, good kid the but, whole but, time? But, but mainly, be, I was, yeah, I was, I was a goody goody. Like goody I was, goody. I was a, uh, you know, I was kind of a, because I was an athlete, I never drank in high school. Love him. Um, never tried drugs. I mean, when when I was growing up, there was a there was a professional basketball player named Len Bias, and I used to love basketball. And and Len Bias was the number five pick in the draft, or something like that, real high pick, and he was going to go to the Celtics, and he did cocaine and had a heart attack. And so I thought, Jesus. if I ever try any drug, I will. Die. I'm going to have a heart attack and I'm going to die on the spot, and then I will disgrace my family. And so, so that was kind of like, I, and then drinking, drinking just never agreed with me. Um, you know, my, my parents always um, sort of taught me how to drink responsibly at dinner. Like we would have una copita de vino every once in a mm-hmm. while. And, you know, they would water mine down with, with they put literally water in mine and they, you know, and, and so I always knew how to drink, to enjoy, to have pleasure with dinner. But but I was not a big partier. Um, and then when I got to SMU, I saw these kids who were millionaires, like legit millionaires, yeah, like crazy. And they <laughs> uh, and they would party from Wednesday to Sunday. And I was like, shit, I'm here on scholarship. You know, I need to honor my parents. They're making a big sacrifice. And so I I triple majored. I graduated with honors. I I was going to outwork anybody at SMU. Um, you know, and great faculty at that school, and I got a really good education. Um, but so I was a, I was a, a you know, I had a, <laughs> my my senior year, I was dating this really beautiful, beautiful woman, brilliant woman. Um, you but get, she, you but, can say her name if you want. No, nah, her, her uh, full she, name. <laughs> <laughs> she's awesome. She's awesome. We remain friends to this day. But um, uh, she broke up with me because I was. I wouldn't take her to the da- to the to the formal dance. First, I didn't have a lot of cash, but second, I had to study for my law SAT. Right, and she was like, "This is unacceptable, dude. You have." I was like, "No, women, women's." <laughs> I tell you, no, and no, she, yeah, yeah. She literally broke up with me for that, and I was like, "Well, I guess you know it's not supposed to happen." But um, <laughs> but that was I was that kind of nerd. I was I was an RA. You know you know what yeah, you, yeah, remember, yeah. you remember nerdy RAs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah, was yeah, me. Yeah. That was me. I was an RA. Um and you know it's funny. Uh, I was in the same RA cluster with uh Reverend Eric Fulkerth, who's the 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 pastor here at Kessler Methodist. Okay. Killer guy, super progressive. Um and then his wife uh Judge Justice Denise Garcia. We were all in the same residence hall. We were all on the same floor. And we were all RAs together, and, we're, and we can we continue to be awesome, awesome friends. But yeah, that was the kind of crowd I ran with, just straight up RA nerds. Really? Yeah. And for and for Denise and Eric, by the way, who uh-huh. uh, whom I just called nerds, um, I'm sorry, but it, it's true. <laughs> they're they're going to know. Yeah, no, they, they're going to know. But I think they I think they would own up to that. You know. I don't think it's I don't think it's such a I don't think it's an insult nowadays. I think no. I think being a nerd is like the the cool thing now. Totally. Have you seen like like the high school kids like if you're not gaming or like you know into like the whole Marvel stuff like you're not you're, you're not, not cool dude right. like, you know what's blowing my mind right now is the anime genre the an- anime yeah like anime that's genre. you know kids kids we you know like you if you did Dungeons and Dragons back in the day that was like super nerdy have you done Dungeons and Dragons never I've never oh, done. God. I, that was a bridge too far for me oh, man. and so the, the you know. But yeah, like my 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 youngest daughter Maya, she's super into anime now. Like yeah, like she she's massively into man. Have you taken her to like one of those like Acons or for sure uh, Comic Cons? I loved it. Really, I loved it. Did we're, you dress up there? Uh, I didn't dress up for that. Um, so I, I took her to the one in Irving um, a couple of years ago, pre-pandemic, and we had a ball. But I didn't dress up. 
Um, mm. And uh, and then and then I've since taken her, you know, with her friends to to one at the airport and everything like that. But I'm I, I own at that uh, at that little Comic Con. I, I bought a Darth Vader uh, nice. uh, replica helmet that I wear. I try to wear regularly on Halloween and stuff like that, or, or for no good reason. Good for you around the house. And uh, and that that. Uh, that helmet, I, I hope to wear it and and the whole outfit to to the next one that we go to together. That's awesome. It, you know, nice people. Really, like at these comic cons, people ever meet. Best people best. ever. Best. Yes. You never find people like that outside. No. Outside of that. Super element. nice, inclusive. You know, supportive. Complimenting your outfits. <laughs> When do when no one compliments a guy nowadays? Nobody, nobody except I guess your partner, but no one really does that, no. you know. Uh, but that that is awesome. I've been to I've been to, I went with a girl one time. Yeah, as a first date. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Was she was she feeling it? No, <laughs> <laughs> no, she didn't. She had, she was she didn't even know that I was into that to be honest. But I didn't plan a date. Like I didn't plan like what should we do other than go eat. And we're driving by the Hilton at the Anatole, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and they they tend to host events like that. Right. And I think it was Acon, and I was like, we drove by, and I was like, you know what? Let's just go. I've always I, I've been wanting to go to one of these, and we walked in, crazy. Everyone's like all dressed up, and I'm like, dude, I, let's buy some sweaters, you know, with the with like the Naruto ninja stuff. Oh, so you like Naruto? Yeah, I love yeah. it. Yeah, let's just at least we can like blend in, but she didn't want to, but. Well, at least you found out early that that she wasn't the one. You know, that was kind of a disqualifying. Thing. The one that got away. <laughs> it's all right. She she knows who she is. But, um, but let's move. Let's move. Let's move. Let's move along. We are in time crunch. Uh, let's. Uh, so, then why uh, why law? So, uh, you know, that was really the influence of my dad. Um, my and and this will probably ring true with with any sons or daughters of immigrants out there. But my dad was like, okay, uh, son, uh, you can be a doctor or a lawyer. He really didn't know about engineering very much mm -hmm. or, or you know, architect maybe, but really doctor or lawyer, those are your choices. And so early on, and, and you know, and he, it's gonna sound weird, but as a new immigrant to this country, he, he emigrated um, right before Watergate happened. And in Watergate, um, lawyers like, Leon Jaworski, for example, saved the day, right? Like lawyers using the Constitution of the United States impeached a sitting, it forced a sitting president to resign. And for him, that was something insane. Like that did not happen in countries. Right. Like if you were the, the, the head of a country, then you were untouchable because he grew up under a, a, a fascist military <laughs> dictatorship, right? For sure. And so he was super inspired by the power of the law and the fact that Richard Nixon would have to leave in disgrace because he was not above the law really blew his mind. And, and so he always, he would always like, like buy me little books from these lawyers or like these biographies of lawyers that, that he really admired. Um, and, and then, uh, and then I, I got a break in, uh, in high school where I signed up for what was called a court observer program okay. where um, you would, you know, like your senior year, you would get to um, skip the last two periods on a Friday oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then we would take the bus or the or the train and we'd go down to the courthouse and we would just sit in on trials all the time, like for hours. And then we'd have to write papers about the trials. And there was like, you know, there were some pretty, pretty famous trials going on at the time. and. Um, and that was impactful for me. And then I did I did um, speech and debate mm -hmm. for all of you parents who are listening out there. Make your kids do speech and debate. Make them do it. It'll be a really good growth experience for them. So I did speech and debate, and then I, uh, I so so and then I did um, yeah mock trial speech and debate court observer. Um, that's about it. But 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 that was pretty impactful. And we didn't know any lawyers. Like my family, right. we had no connection to any lawyers. We didn't know any. So, but it was like in, I guess, high school when you were like, I, I want to do that. I do want to do this. Yeah. It wasn't, yeah. you didn't do like the go to college and uh, we'll, I'll figure it out, I'll, you know? No, my dad was pretty adamant. I had to pick one or two. That's awesome. And I wasn't a med school guy. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, it was, it was, you know, it made, it made the decisions pretty clear. Right. <laughs> it me. sounds tough, but I was like, it's a good, it's a good kind of like tough that it's like, you 
you had, these are your only, these are your two options. And I practiced for, you know, almost 20, 25 years and uh, feel good about my legal career, became a partner at, at, a, at a large law firm. And now, you know, we started up our, our investment firm about, about 10 years ago. And so I'm, you know, uh, I, I, if you can get a, a law degree at a low cost, like mm -hmm. without big student loans, I say do it. It's really, it's a good education. It gives me an advantage when I'm in the, uh, when I'm on the House floor, especially in, in debate right. on the House floor. Um, when, when I go up against non-lawyers, uh, I can feel the difference. I can tell. Oh, yeah, I yeah. bet, I bet. Yeah. No. Damn, that's, that's wild. I, uh, how do you, how do you, like today, how do you use, like this is uh, kind of going into more of a, like, you as a person in your in your professional career but like how do you use like uh your social medias to your advantages because i know right now it's not really I, I don't know i feel like i feel like it's kind of like not just with you but like like in general with like politicians it's kind of like bland like people's social media um, but you know, now that we are moving into more like tech, you know, like a world, the metaverse is coming out, you know, like how, uh, how important do you, or what are, what, what strategies do you, have you been implementing or are you guys really kind of not focusing as much on that? No, we do. We do. Like I, you know, our social media account, um, generates or requires a lot of staff time actually, you know, to, to keep people focused and yeah, it is a little blah. Um, uh, in part because if it's staff driven, they don't want to make a mistake. Because like the right. last thing, the last thing they want to do is put something out there that ends up on the news as, right. a, as a, a big screw up, and then you know their asses are on the line basically. So so they're going to be more cautious. Um, it, like my the difference for me is on my Twitter feed, it's just me because I like Twitter. I like it. It's terrible. It's a horrible cesspool of, of, of anger. <laughs> <laughs> right. But but I also um, but it also serves as my news feed. You know that's how that's how I get through a lot of content in news very quickly, so I can stay abreast of what's going on. Or sometimes like you'll be here and you hear a, a loud explosion in Oak Cliff or something like that. Right. And you're right. like, what the hell happened? So I'll go I'll go on try Twitter and it. try to figure out what's happening. Right. Mm -hmm. And so. Um, I, I spend, I, mm, if you ask Rebecca, I should probably tell you, I spend too much time on Twitter. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> she's, she will frequently say she she regrets the day she introduced me to it, uh, but. Uh, you're, so you're fairly new, you're, you, can, you can consider yourself new to like, ish, new being ish. active as, on mm, it. I'd say, I'd say, yeah, oh. five, five, six years ago maybe. So okay. that, that's, yeah. that's relatively new, I guess. Um, so I, there are there are some elected officials, different styles. I've got a colleague named Gene Wu who like fights with trolls all the time. Really, and he has a lot of followers. Uh -huh. I've got uh, I've got another colleague who really you know just first time member re didn't pass a bill, um, and, but she had a good online presence, mm -hmm. and you know now she's a front runner for a congressional seat. And and you know I I always thought like you had to have this like long list of accomplishments and prove mm -hmm. yourself before you tried to r run for something else. And she just has an, you know, a, a Twitter presence or a, a social media, a very active social media presence. And, and it works for her. Right. It works for her. You know, I, the reason why I asked that is because I, I've, I, I've admitted to you before we were recording that I'm not really big on, I don't follow a lot of politics. Right. Uh, Obviously, when there's big news, I, I think it's kind of hard not to know about it, right? Uh, but I do think it is important to know, especially what's going on in your districts, you know, what's happening locally, um, you know, from school boards to the, you know, your your representatives, right? I think it's very, it's highly important. But my thing is, and, I, and I, I'm sure there's a lot that can agree with people around my age or even older or younger that, you know, I, the best way to kind of explain it is like I see politics like like church, you know, <laughs> church is like it's it's the same thing. It's all <laughs> it's for, for the past decades. It's the same thing, you know, and it's it's just not interesting anymore you know I th and I'm, I'm I don't know these numbers I don't know the numbers you're but like I'm the average Texan by yeah, the way. I'm pretty sure there's an article there's statistics out there like can prove 
and I, I mean, I could be wrong, that there are less younger people going to church nowadays. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah and and sure, and I sure. and, and I feel like it's and it's kind of like the same as with politics. It's just their information's out there. There's all kinds of information. Right. We can all we all have it in our hands from our phones, in our phones. But it's just like it's the same thing. And do you think it's could they be doing this on purpose? Just like we don't want to change it because we don't want people to get that involved, you know? Or it's just like should there be more changes because it's just outdated? So, you know, I think in terms of criticism of, of some faith traditions, you'd say, hey, you have not evolved. Your adherence to to dogma has not permitted you to right. evolve so that you can continue to grow your flock. Um, and in politics, you know, I think I think there are two, two things that are going on. I, I see a lot of young people uh, involved in politics and, and, I, and the electorate is changing as a result. Um, and so, uh, you, however, however, um, you are representative of most voters in Texas. I mean, we the the lack of participation in this state mm -hmm. by everybody, Republicans, Democrats, right. Independents, you know, is is we're, we're frequently fiftieth out of fifty states, and so so part of it. You know, part of it is is a you know I, I can I can jump on my high horse and say well it's personal responsibility you need to right. you know as a as a citizen you have you have rights but you also have obligations and one of your obligations is to be civically informed blah 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 so that's that's okay fine mm -hmm. stipulated right mm -hmm. but then but then elected officials um, need to do a better job of capture captivating people's imaginations. Right, and making the case that politics really is super important to your everyday life, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, uh, you know, I, I asked Rebecca, how would you get involved in in politics? She was like, well, you know, I, I it was almost by accident. Two things happened. One, I got involved in politics because I was a I was a dreamer, and in two thousand one, um, uh, a bill was passed to allow dreamers to go to UT you know, within state tuition, right? The uh, Texas Dream right, Act. Right, right. That's right. Yeah. So she went to UT, unbelievable, changed her whole trajectory. Mm -hmm. And then the second thing was when she was at UT, young conservatives uh, at, at UT had a, um, you know, catch an illegal day, right? Where basically if you, if you brought someone who you thought, they thought was an illegal alien in their terms, an undocumented student, um, that they would get like candy bar. They would offer prizes for people who were catching, quote unquote, catching illegals. And that, you know, so she protested that. She's like, this is this is inhuman, this is horrible. And that's when she became a Democrat. Because she was pretty conservative before that. Mm -hmm. And she was like, no, this is what the young conservatives of Texas stand for, forget that noise, I ain't doing that. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, she's talking about me, my family. And this is, you know, this is not right. This is hateful. And so, I, unless you have a personal experience like that where you can connect public policy right. with with your life improving it's hard it, it's hard to break through and we need to be a, do a better job about it be more creative about it I, I, you know I like that example that you gave of Rebecca um, because you, there's it's like the perfect example of like there's different types of Latinos right sure uh, there's the ones that that do have it hard, you know, the ones that come over and the kids, you know, they have to face some of the consequences of like, you know, of the actions, you know, of their parents wanting to do give them a better life. But they grow up, you know, either with like fear or they grow up with um, like maybe they, they 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 owe something to their parents because, you know, they didn't get to have, you know, with the, uh, the opportunities that they're giving now. Um, but it is it's hard and, it, and it, there's the suffering to it. But then you have another set of Latinos that don't go through any of that at all. Yeah, they made it. They, they it's, and it could be a first gen, not it's a first generation uh, Hispanics, Mexicans or like uh, or any but or second or third right and it's very rare when i guess like the second or third generation like holds the grudge of like <laughs> my grandparents suffered and they gave it they gave it all up for us yeah but whether it's whether it's latinos or italian or any, or, any or, it's, or irish it's, or whatever exactly. it's, right? it's yeah. not it's not even uh it's anyone that comes in that goes into another country right but a lot of it is like a, so it's a, it's kind of hard for like for like the ones that are like let's say like uh for me for example that i uh, 
I, thankfully, or I, I'm, 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 I'm fortunate to like, I, I really didn't grow up having any sort of issues right. like that. But at the same time, it's, I'm not that like uh, aware of much of like politics that goes on because I wasn't affected directly by it, by, you know, by, I guess, the man, you know, if, so to speak. Sure. And that's, you know, that's a form of, of, and I'm not saying this pejoratively, but that's a form of luxury or privilege, right? right. Like, like when you have that, that means you kind of made it. Like you were born mm-hmm. in the United States. Wow. That's huge. I, I was born in the United States too. I'm like, what a freaking awesome yeah. privilege. Imagine. Not, For sure. I mean, imagine being, you know, that your DNA ended up somewhere else in, in, the, yeah. in the world, right? For sure. And so... And so that also, that luxury or privilege gives you the opportunity to do other things mm-hmm. like podcasts and, <laughs> and, and creativity and it lets you hang out with musicians and it lets you, it, that's really amazing, right? So you can, you, you are, because you, you made it, then it's, it's less, tan, this other stuff is less tangible, right? right? I, I get it. And I'm not saying I'm saying it like respect. That's right, great. right for sure. Uh, so, so like I guess the question really it's like how is so how do we do how do which how do you what do you what do you recommend like for just like a a teenager or someone in their in their twenties thirties that's like like for example, say like in my example that we just aren't we don't have that impact directly you know. Uh, so there's an easy hack. I'll, and I'll tell you what it is. Um, uh, elected officials of any stripe, they, um, because of limited resources that we have in our campaigns, mm-hmm. right? They're not publicly funded campaigns. We have to raise the money, which is the hardest thing to do. And then we have to try to communicate with voters, which is also very hard to do. Um, and we have limited, we have limited resources. Therefore, we have to make decisions about who we're going to prioritize in terms of communication. And then you have, so you have a budget and you say, I'm going to communicate. These folks always vote, mm-hmm. man, I'm going to communicate with them first. Mm-hmm. And then if I have budget, then I'm going to hit this, these people who vote every once in a while. Right. Right. I'm going to try to hit them. And then gosh, then we have this, this basket over here of people who never vote. They're called low propensity voters. And so if I'm able to raise enough budget, I'll try to communicate with them. And so. The, the hack is voting once or twice in two, two election cycles in a row. Doesn't matter, pick one person. Mm-hmm. Just go on election day and vote and say, okay, I like, you know, Beto O'Rourke or I like um, Elba Garcia. Mm-hmm. And I'm gonna go and just, if you, even if you don't know who else is on the list, just go vote one time. Why? Because then you get on my list and you get moved up in my priority. And then, oh. right, because because then you you have voted in two elections in a row. Mm-hmm. Ooh, you're a, you have become a regular voter. I need to absolutely communicate with you, absolutely. On my limited budget, you have moved from a low propensity voter to a a sort of mid range voter, and maybe even a mm-hmm. regular voter. Just just vote in two mm-hmm. elections in a row, two November elections in a row, and boy, people will come out of the woodwork. Or you know, and that, that's because a lot of people are like, hey, I'm kind of an independent, you know, I may yeah. be, you know, <laughs> yeah. I, I hear it like 20 times a day. Well, I'm fiscally conservative and socially liberal, you yeah. know, what, whatever that means. And and so I say, if you vote in a primary, if you vote in the Democratic primary on March 1st, for example, I mean, people will identify you as, as a Democrat. But if you vote in the November election, people don't know what you are. People have no idea what you are. And... You, if you vote in November of 2022 and November of 2024, people are going to communicate with you. You're going to be getting mail. You're going to be getting calls. Peop, and, and, and you'll be like, oh, people come to your door. And you'll be like, oh, let me ask you, um, candidate XYZ, what's your position on this? Like, explain where you are on this. Mm-hmm. And then suddenly you'll just get sucked in. And that's the hack. But you have to do it. You have to do it more than once. You have to do it a couple times. And then suddenly, everybody's going to be investing in you because you're a young Latino who's a regular voter. Boom, you're going to hit somebody's demographic like sweet spot, mm. and you'll you'll get you'll get a lot of people reaching out to you and fighting for your vote. Gotcha. And so that's the hack. That's the hack. That's the hack. Holy cow! I didn't even know that. I, yep. I hmm. Look at that. So just pick one person. Say, hey, look, I, okay. you know, I like 
this person's boy she she dresses really well and the Can two times the, the two times I heard her on TV she sounded together mm-hmm. boom I'm gonna go I'm gonna find when that person's on the ballot I'm gonna go vote for her that's that's it that's what happens <laughs> that's how it goes that's, <laughs> that's, that, that's how it goes really okay oh my gosh I can't tell you ay niño te ves tan guapo en la televisión aunque te digo que te ves más delgado en persona I can't tell you how many ha- times I've heard that because you know TV puts like 10 pounds on you and and so I've had, I've had, I've had sweet, sweet little ancianas, viejitas, tell me, ah, te ves, te ves más delgadito en persona porque yo te veo por la televisión, and that just cracks me. Uh-huh. Up. I love that. I love that. That is awesome. Makes me happy. What's well, alright? Do you? How, and I was gonna tell you, like, what, I, one of the, the issues, I guess, when I do get informed, or is is the falling into like that one category like you were saying you know that either democrat or republican and a lot of people are like no, I just, i'm independent yeah. but it's always it's you know it's 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 kind of hard to like know like i was like well i like i like rafael cause on this on this subject sure. you know he's really good i I, lo- I like what he believes when it comes to this maybe i don't really agree with this other stuff that he that he believes right. in right and so that's just kind of like the the difficult part and where people don't really just want to fall into like one category is like oh man like I have to choose either like the Democrat or Republican. Yeah, I mean, but they're they're you know I they're independents who are going to be on the ballot. They're Green Party candidates who are going to be on the ballot, and and so what I tell people is, first of all, to your point about I may like something that 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 he stands mm-hmm. for, but I don't like something else he stands for. You're going to find that with everybody, 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 including your your favorite primo, mm-hmm. including your favorite yeah. tia. Um, in our families, we see that all the time, right? Your your, your siblings. Bless them. <laughs> <laughs> we're like, I really love that about my sister, and I really hate this other yeah. thing about them. So you're going to find that in, in any elected official. Um, and it's funny, I, I, I got to go to this program uh, on leadership, um, and the author of this book called Leadership on the Line said, uh, you know, he asked us if if we thought we were leaders and people in the class were like, yeah, I think I am. And they started giving these speeches. She's like, shut up with those hero speeches. You are not leaders. You know what leadership is? He said, leadership is disappointing your constituents at a rate that they can absorb. Right? So because, wow. because and, and this is his point, if you are engaging in leadership, you know, Oftentimes, you're going to be out of step with the people that your friends and neighbors have sent you to represent their interests. And they're going to be like, hey, 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 what are you doing? And you're going to be like, well, look, I'm trying to be consistent here, and this is my guiding principle. And they're like, but yeah, we we like you when we agree with you only. And I'm like, well, that's it's not, you don't. You don't send me here to be with you 100% of the time. You send me here because you think I'm going to come down here and and make thoughtful, good decisions. So, you know, that's you're not going to be able to make everybody happy on every one yeah. of your decisions. And so your your constituents have to you you need to have built up enough goodwill with them and made good enough decisions and and to where hey, they're going to be disappointed every once in a while. Right. Cuz you're, you're and that's just the way things go. That's just that's just how it is to lead. Because if not, I'm just going to go down there and I'm going to do everything that the that the um, you know that the endorsing groups want. Mm-hmm. I'm never going to think about it. I'm going to say, oh hey, how do you want me to vote on this? How do you want me to vote? Right, right, right. This group, that group, that group, that group. How do you want me to do it? Well, then you're not leading. Mm-hmm. You're just doing whatever they allow you to do, and. And that's what's happening, I think, to a lot of our, there are a lot of these outside, well-funded outside pressure groups that my Republican colleagues, they come up to me all the time, God dang it, I don't want to vote for that. This is the worst, dumbest idea. But man, if I don't vote for that, I'm going to get a primary opponent. And I'm like, well, then how does that distinguish you from the primary opponent that's going to hit you on this? Because you're going to vote that way for this ungodly bill why? Because, and you're not going to show any sh- leadership here. You're going to capitulate. And then had you voted that way and gotten beaten, the result would have been the same. But had you voted that way and then won in your next election cycle, you would be showing leadership. So it's it, it's like this really tough balance. Um, and, 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 and unfortunately, with, with all this outside money in politics and 
I, I, I'm seeing less and less political courage in Austin, and it's it's a shame. It's a shame. How do you handle those like the critiques or even like the the disagreements? It's hard um, because you know I've had people I'm very close to tell me how disappointed they am in me are are in me, and you know sometimes it costs you supporters and friendships, and, right. and that's just unfortunately that happens. Um, but does it get to you like sure. emotionally, oh, like sure. mentally? Pers- sure. Yeah. I mean, being criticized, it's it's not fun. Mm-hmm. It's not fun. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, I, so I, I try not to read the comments. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. Because thank you. Thank you. Good it's job. one of the things I've had to make myself disciplined about is not reading the comments all the time. And, uh, and, and just... Uh, analyzing hey if I acted in a certain way or voted in a certain way what was what were the principles behind that and if, if I'm comfortable with those principles that's okay then then then, then I'm like okay um, I'll take the criticism mm-hmm. I will explain to people why I did what I did and um, and just live with it and if they want to change me out that's okay too mm-hmm. you know if they if my friends and neighbors say hey you know you uh, you have disappointed us to the extent where we can't take it anymore, then, uh, you know, then you lose elections. And that's why the ba- leadership is a tough balance because, you know, you want, as, as, as Marty Linsky said, you have to, you have to disappoint people at a rate that they can absorb. And the extreme case is like Martin Luther King, right? He was leading, he was leading, he was leading and people couldn't absorb it. And he was assassinated. Right. 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 Malcolm X assassinated. Right. Um, and so they led in a way that ultimately for them, sadly, uh, and for us, sadly, um, was not sustainable. And so uh, but but if you're confident as King was and X was in where they were coming from, uh, then that was, you know, they put their leadership on the line. Yeah. And so, yeah, it hurts. It, so, so in short answer, it hurts. It hurts. Oh. It, it hurts like a mother to, to be <laughs> criticized, especially from people you really, you go back a long way with and you admire. Yeah, it's not fun. Yeah. It's not fun, but you got to suck it up. You do. And that is, that is very true in any field, not just in. For real? Yeah. What, what about like you, how you say, like, you know, you can get replaced. Or uh, the next thing you know, let, let's say you're running against another Hispanic that's in yeah. the Democrat. Like, how, how does that, does that, how does how, does that hurt? Does, how, does that happen much? I guess because it kind of divides when people just start going by like the, the last name or like which ones are Hispanics. <laughs> you know, it's like, all right, we got two of them, you know, that are. So um, that's interesting. I have I have not had to face that in a while because, I mean, I've, I've had a Republican opponent the last two times. Um, and, you know, the margins have been pretty big. I won by 50 and like. 45 percent anything over five percent mm-hmm. is a big win so if you win by 50 it's a, 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 a <laughs> schmeckling is as my my friends would say but um i'm you know i'm by nature a competitive person i don't think you you, you can be in public service and, and sure. you know and do a good job for your constituents if you're not competitive for them and competitive generally and so uh i i fully expect that day to come uh, at some point, whether it's in this office or or in another office, and and I think at that point, you know, if you believe that you are the best person for that office, you're going to compete for that office, and you are going to work really, really hard. You're going to try to outwork your opponent. You're going to try to um, connect with as many voters as possible, and and win that race. People, you know, if you do not believe, by the way, that you're the best person for that race. You shouldn't be right. You shouldn't be running it. Right. You shouldn't be in that race. Like if you if you have even a doubt in your mind, well, that other person, they may they may be doing a better. They they, I think they're better for that job. Then don't do it. Then don't do it. I've turned out running for a lot of other things, you know, to to do this job Mm -hmm. because I feel like I'm really good at it. Um, And I wasn't 100 percent sure that a I was either going to be great at the other job or b that I was going to enjoy that job. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I declined to run for other things because I feel like I have the best job. The, the best job I've ever had is this one. That's awesome. It's weird. Yeah. I mean, because some people see, you know, you see some politicians who are like, they'll be in a, in a job for a second and then they'll they'll jump to another job and then they'll jump to another job. And 
Uh, yeah, this is the only job I've wanted to really do. Really? Yeah. So as, even when you just, when you decided to, when you do become when you became a lawyer, it's like all right, I do want to run at some point. Oh well, no, that's a good point. No, <laughs> so so I, I was an accidental candidate. I, I was scared of public, of, of being in the public eye in this way. I was very frightened of it, um, and and thinking that well, maybe you know, I'm I, I'm the son of immigrants. I'm kind of happy with my career. I'm making more money on my first day than both my parents combined. You know, of being a lawyer, I was mm -hmm. thinking, I don't want to mess this up. Like, right. and if I run for something, I may have to mess this up, and 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 you know, maybe I get fired from my job. <laughs> no, yeah, so yeah think, no, yeah. That's what you. How am I gonna? How am I gonna make money? I, you know, and and I, 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 I'm at this great firm, this great job, and uh, in the end, it was like uh, I, I was really inspired by um, a couple people. One. Uh, was um, Ron Kirk, who was the mayor back then. Ron pulled me into his office one day and he said, hey, I want you to run for the school board. It's a really important time in Dallas. You need to do this. Um, if you need for me to call the, the head partner at your office to you know, see if we can give you a little bit of leeway for you to, to serve, I will, and he did. Um, then the other person who was really uh, inspiring was Laura Miller. She was the council member from this area in Oak Cliff for a while. She later became mayor. It's funny because Laura and Ron didn't ever get, get along, but I got along with both of them and they were both influential. And then finally, Trini Garza. Trini Garza was, uh, the, 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 I think, the first Hispanic um, school board member from, from this area in Oak Cliff. And Trini uh, told me he believed in me, you know? And that, that I was like, wait, you, you're a legend. I mean, he now has a school named after him. And he, he told me he believes in me for this. That was like a real game changer for me. And so those, those three people, I think, had had a big influence on my running for the school board um, because I didn't think I I didn't think I didn't think I, I was smart enough uh, to, to do the job necessarily. I, I was like, well, this is, you know, this is a billion dollar budget. I'm a 31 year old kid, right. basically. How am I going to be in charge of a billion dollar budget? But after I got elected, I realized, holy smokes, I'm actually, I'm actually one of the more prepared people on this board. <laughs> <laughs> so I better work hard and, and figure this thing, nice. thing out. You know. Anyway, so uh, again, a, a long answer, but no, no, no. but um, you, you have to you have to have some belief in 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 yourself or have others believe in you. I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I had a rapper. Uh, he he came on. He's from Terrell. Shout out! His name's Brown, and here he was like, I was like, dude, how do you, how do you handle it when, when your friends, the close, the people closest to you, they don't believe in you? And he's like, it's not their job. Mm. He's like, it's not their job to make me successful. I got to work hard for it. And I was like, dude, that is awesome. That's a good response. It's not their job, yeah. And think about but when that. They, but when they do though, it's like, it changes. It's like it's the world, you know. And when people do have your back and they follow you, the yeah. ones that you care about the most, Oof. yeah, you you feel unstoppable. You feel unstoppable. Yeah, and how, how like and I know you're answering the asking the questions, but like no, go ahead. How, I, like what kind of support did you get? And you know, at home, um, to to give you the confidence to to, to be a, a public persona. Um, honestly, man, is I don't even know. I I was. It started with just being bored through COVID. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, that, it, that is that is the that is the truth, and that's the it's all that's the only answer I have is I was honestly bored, and uh, I was I was very fascinated of like just seeing people like how are they so interactive on social media, and I've never I would never even take a picture and for people to post or like you know when you know when you're going out to drink like having drinks with your buddies. And they're all recording the drinks and like everyone that's there. <laughs> I would always leave. I didn't want to be there. I didn't want to be there. I don't want right. people to see me. Right. But now it's like, well, you know what? Who cares? You know, I'm only getting older. It's like just, just do it. That's awesome. And it's it, it's tough. It, I, even to this day, I, I do get I get scared when I post something. I do get right. I, I do get scared. It doesn't go away. I don't think you ever. I don't think you ever lose the nerves <laughs> of like people are going to listen to me or they're going to watch this or you know because I. You might say something bad or but you just kind of have to not care yeah or like not put so much attention obviously you don't want to hurt anyone but you if you think too much about others in that way of like the, your decisions it's like you, you'll never do anything mm. but no thanks thanks for asking me that um how are we doing on time by the way 
That's a good question. I haven't even looked down. Yeah, you know what? Let's. Uh, I do want to focus a little bit, uh, just a little bit more about your projects that you got going on. Yeah. You know, uh, the early voting started. Right. Uh, on Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, anything you want, you really would like to get out. You would really like to share to the audience. You know, um, when I will say this, because you know your audience is mainly Latino, right? It, Actually, it's a mix. It's a mix. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, everything. Oh, that, that's amazing. It's it's good to have that broad based appeal. Um, you know, I would say that that yeah, there is there's a really interesting. There are a lot of young, um, really good Latino elected officials that are on the ballot and, and African Americans as well. Um, some of some of whom used to intern in my office, and and I've known them for a long time. They're 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 really great. They de they deserve you know support, um, and e e because election day is coming up on on March first, early voting is the way to do it. Though I got to tell you, that's the other hack. Just yeah. the no lines. You just walk in. You 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 know you say either Republican or Democrat, whatever you are. Uh, I want to vote in the primary, and then and then it it, it will. I'm a big McDonald's fan, and I usually time how long it takes me bet between my t the time of my order to, you know, um, to getting my order, and and shout out to the McDonald's on on Fort Worth Avenue. Always Go ahead and endorse both of us. <laughs> <laughs> those guys always, those ladies always take care of me. They're all uh, awesome, yeah. awesome, awesome. And so, um, voting will take about that long. Going through the drive-through. Going through the drive-through. Yeah, basically, it's it's that long. <laughs> it's that long. Yeah, uh, it's that short, I should say. And it's it's not easy to take your license, you know, or your passport or something like that because they changed the law a couple of years ago. And just um, you know, m m make sure you're registered, obviously, uh, and 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 go just go do it. It's like it's simple. You'll you'll come out of there. They'll give you a little sticker. You put the sticker on your lapel. You take a selfie. You say, "Hey, fool." On you know Valentine's Day week, I voted. Show show me love, and you know, and then and that's it. And that's it. So yeah, I'd say you know I've been I'm, I'm working with a lot of younger candidates now, uh, trying to really uh, pump them up, uh, try to get more uh, broad based representation. Like uh, among the people I'm supporting is you know there's a you know a young lawyer, Muslim lawyer uh, of Pakistani descent. He's running for state rep in in Tarrant County. I'm a big fan of, of Solomon's. Um, you know, I'm supporting a, you know, a gay African American man for Congress. I'm supporting a bunch of young Latinos for the judiciary. Um, supporting African American women for state rep. I mean, and so like this is 95 percent of all the growth in the state of Texas during the last census was black and brown and Asian, like 95 percent. And so this is what we. This is what political representation is going to look like from here on out. And um, and we, we need good people to represent us. Like we really need well-prepared people with great skills who have a heart for, for public service, who are doing it for the right reasons. Those are the people we need in office. And uh, so that, that, that's my latest project is to really try to spend time and invest with young people um, in, in running for office. And it's, I'm, I've been I've been super impressed with the quality. There's a lot of a, a lot of uh, quality. All they lack is experience, but they can't get experience without giving right. a shot. So I'm proud of them. And then and then the other the other project I'm working on is you know I'm sort of coaching my daughter's volleyball team a little bit. Oh, nice. Like assist, not coaching, assistant coaching. Assistant to the coach. Assistant to the coach's <laughs> assistant, I think. <laughs> and I really I really like volleyball. I played a lot in college and as a and in high school. Um, too short to be good, but I, you know, I, I'm, I, I could play. I, I, I before my body His heart's there. gave out on me. Um, I used to be able to play some good sand volleyball, and so I'm spending a lot of time with the girls doing volleyball. And then Sophie is a senior in high school, so been kind of talking through college for her. And you know, God, God willing, she'll. Should make a good choice, <laughs> right? And so that's that's my life right now. You know, that's what I'm doing. I'm a chauffeur. I'm a dad. I'm a volleyball coach. I care about young people. I'm a mentor to young people getting elected, and um, and then you know, every once in a while, I'll go down here to Bishop Arts or 
go down to Ranchito or La Calle 12 and, and go to dinner with Rebecca and try to be a good good partner to her. That's it. That's all I got. Take her to the drag show here at the Trove. For real. I really do. Uh, and I know uh, both she and my daughters will really enjoy it. So, yeah, we, we need to come down to the Trove. Shout out to the Trove and, and, and the drag queens here who put on an amazing performance for brunch. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, last question, man. Uh, and this is just, you know, for anyone who's... Uh, who's, I guess, not necessarily just going into politics, but are there any good books that you recommend for, I don't know, leadership or just like motivation on itself? Yeah, actually, um, two, two things, uh, two books. Like my favorite book of all time is just about following your dreams. And I think will will be good whether you're gonna do public service or anything else. And that's The Alchemist by Paulo oh, Coelho, if you've read yeah, it. Yeah. It's just about following your dreams and not letting your, you know, your fears uh, about what might happen get in your way. And it, it, you know, that that book, I think, I've seen it borne out in my life where you, if you want something with all your heart, the world actually helps you to get there, you know? And people, you know, angels come into your life to help you get where where your heart's telling you you need to go so that's first and then secondly i always tell people to read biographies about people you admire who have done public service you know you may, maybe you like uh fdr maybe you like john f kennedy maybe you like um kamala harris you know may, maybe you like uh you're inspired by cesar chavez or read their personal stories because what you will realize beyond the posters and the slogans is everything like that there were human beings mm -hmm who made mistakes, who had failures in their life, who learned from their failures, um, and they're not much different from you. So it helps demystify people who did great things, right? Mm -hmm. And and it, it, it allows that to be tangible for you. You too can do great things and, and just see what other people had to go through, uh, lo que necesitaban superar, and then it, I am all, I always come away from those things super inspired, and you know, like, and it, it it just goes beyond kind of that you know maybe that that mural or that poster or that photograph that you saw of that person. It it puts them in context. It make it humanizes them, right? And it and it makes them very relatable to you. That's awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for your time. I know you have to get going. Uh, man, this is awesome. Uh, how can we find you on, do you, do you know your handles? Yeah, at oh, Rafael yeah. Lanchi on Twitter for sure. That's where, where Rafa comes in spicy a little bit. Yeah. Uh, and you, you get some valuable information, but um, you know, when I'm full of the Holy Spirit, sometimes I'll go to Twitter and, and let people know about it. There you uh, go, <laughs> come, come in hot. Um, Instagram, do you know it? Yeah, yeah. I don't know my Insta handle. Uh, I don't know my Facebook. We're gonna, we're gonna tag, we're gonna Super post it all. We're gonna, we're awesome. gonna, we're gonna get it all on there. Uh, but. Yeah, and then, and then, uh, you know, um, anytime, man. Like seriously, yeah. I, I, you know, my my better three quarters, Rebecca and I. I think we'd love to come on the show and just, you know, talk. You know, not, not only life stories, but like, let's let's talk uh, about things that, you know, relationships, let's talk about fashion, let's talk about music, <laughs> for real. And, and and she's, you know, she's a little bit younger than me, but but um, you know, so there, I think there'd be a cool contrast in style, but she's way more impressive than I am. You should definitely have her on. I have, I have, I, I know Rebecca quite well. All right. Yeah, I'll yeah. definitely, we, for sure, we'll make it happen. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you, man. Appreciate you. For sure, my guy. I, Say hi to your mom for me. I will. I will cool. tell. Yeah. Cool. Uh, all right. Thank you. Thank you, man. I uh, thank you guys for listening in. Uh, yes, that is it. <laughs> <laughs> We're good, dude. Thanks. We're out. Rafa, sorry, I didn't mean to call you, dude. All good. All good. Peace. All right. Hey, peace. So one last thing. 